morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service for Sunday the 14th of June from Queen's Park Govan Hill Parish Church. It's good to know that so many of you are sharing with us today on our web page, on Facebook, via YouTube or over the phone line. Whoever you are, wherever you are, however you are joining with us, you are very welcome indeed. Today in our service we have something different. We're pleased to have a song being sung for us by Bruce Davis. Bruce is a renowned Scottish singer-songwriter. He is also a very committed Christian and has been a friend of mine for a very long time. He offered to sing a song for the online worship services of Minister Friends and I was glad to take him up in the offer and ask him to do that for us. There is one song that he wrote and sings which I knew fitted a little with what we'll be thinking about today about love and compassion. In this song, Bruce sings that when we love people, we do things for them that we might not consider if we did not love them. He speaks about what we do for folks we love. He mentions also those in our society who do so much for us. And at this time, we might think of those whose work continues in risky situations and helps to keep our society going. Those who are treating or nursing or caring or tending or transporting, delivering, serving and so on and so forth. But then Bruce points out in this song that there is one who did more than anyone could ever do for us because he loved us and he loves us still. As you will hear today, Jesus said that he would love us, and he did, and he does. Bruce's song will come later in our service, as we customarily do when we join together in our worship. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Our opening worship this morning consists of three praise items from Mission pay, Praise 606. We'll sing Soft in My Heart and then we'll sing verse 1 of Mission Praise 1163, Christ is the World. And then our opening worship and opening praise time will conclude with a traditional hymn, Mission Praise 449, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Let us worship God. Oh, 
Great God, your love has called us here. Great God, your grace has named us as yours. Great God, your mercy has brought us to this new day. We come to worship you, for you are a loving God, a gracious God, a merciful God. We come to worship you, for you are a God who calls, a God who names, a God who brings new beginnings. Great God, when we have closed our ears to your call, when we have been slow on the uptake, and when we have wondered what is in it for us, forgive us. When we have assumed that you would not want to name us as disciples, when we have forgotten that you love each one of us so much that you know our names, forgive us. When we have turned away from your new beginnings, when we have been afraid of new beginnings, when our words, actions and attitudes have denied new beginnings to others, forgive us. Forgive us, call us, name us, and give us a new beginning this day. In the name of Christ our Lord, and hear us as we make our own silent confession of sins. The Almighty and merciful God grant you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace. Almighty God, without you we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose words we join together in prayer, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Good morning, Pathfinders. It's been a great week and we've loved seeing all your art that you've been sending in. So colourful and bright. Really well done, everyone. Yes, well done everyone. Your artwork's been really good. Um, don't forget to keep checking up the website and send us your artwork through the emails because we'd love to see more of your artwork that you do. We really would and it's been fantastic seeing it all coming in. So this week's story is going to be delivered by some very special people that we haven't seen in quite some time. So let's see what the story is this week. Good morning, how can I help you? I'm looking for a job. Great. Well, you've come to the right place. This is the job centre after all. The clue's in the title. What? Oh, yeah. Right, let's see then. Hmm, what qualifications do you have? None really. That's why I haven't got a job. Okay. Well, let's see what we've got in the list. Um, I've got a carpenter here who's looking for joiners. I'm not sure. I've never really done any carpentry, although I did put some shelves up at home once. Well, there we are then. That's a good start. He fell down. Oh. And anyway, who is this carpenter? He's got a shop in Nazareth. Ugh. Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Not too keen then. Let's see what else we have. I've got some sheep here in need of a shepherd. You mean the sheep put up the ad? Not exactly, but there is a vacancy. It seems all you need to be good at is giving directions and pointing out the way. I'm rubbish at finding my way about. I once got lost when I went to buy a paper. And anyway, I don't fancy spending my life with a bunch of woolly-minded animals all going in the same direction. That'll be a no to the civil service then. Hmm. Have you ever done any fishing? Only in rock pools on holiday. Why? Well, there's someone here looking for fishers of men. 
You mean fishermen? No. It says fishers of men. What would you use for bait? Worms would would be no good. Maybe a football and a piece of string? He's based near the Sea of Galilee, so I reckon he means fishing with nets. You need a very strong net. I guess so. No, I'm not very good on water, and I get seasick on a boating lake. Hmm. Okay, I've got one last job, and I reckon it could suit you down to the ground. Oh, what's that? It's working for a lord. A lord? Eh? I have to watch my P's and Q's. He's looking for workers to bring in his harvest. What qualifications or experience do I need? None. It says that all he wants are people who are willing to work hard. No one ever accused me of being lazy. I'll give it a go. Great. Where do I report? And when do I start? There's a map here which shows you where his harvest field is. And you can start right away. Thanks. And thank you for your help. Don't mention it. Happy harvesting. Today's reading is taken from Matthew chapter 9, reading from verse 35 and on into chapter 10. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles, or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Do not take along any gold or silver or copper in your belts. Take no bag for the journey or extra tunic or sandals or a staff. For the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search for some worthy person there and stay at his house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. 
If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town. I tell you the truth, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. For this reading from God's Holy Word, thanks be to God. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, for they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Compassion. Now, just as last week I brought a Greek word into the wee talk, so I'm going to give you another wee bit of a Greek lesson this week. For the Greek word used here for compassion, Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, is a word that's used only another 11 times in the Gospels in the New Testament. And it's a word that comes from the Greek word for, would you believe it, bowels. A literal translation of this word, translated here, compassion, would be, To be moved as to one's bowels. In ancient times, a person's insides were considered to be the seat and centre of human emotion. This is not the only word that's translated compassion in the New Testament. So this word here has been specifically chosen to describe Jesus' response because it speaks of the depth of compassion he is displaying towards the crowds. By using this word, Matthew is telling us that Jesus was deeply, very deeply moved. He was feeling compassion in his very gut, as we might say, gut-wrenching compassion, as we might also describe it. This love that he felt came from deep down, His feeling of concern and sympathy for the crowds came from very deep within him. Jesus had compassion. Jesus has compassion, deep and powerful compassion for us and for all. Jesus embodies the very essence of compassion. We have a Lord who has compassion and pity for us and who rather than being distant from our darkness and our distress even at this strange time for us in our society perhaps especially at such times instead of being distant he reveals this deep down compassion as he takes on himself our suffering and sorrow as he shares our darkness and even death, as he reveals and embodies that deep compassion which he expressed for the crowd in today's reading, and as he feels it now for all those who have been hurt or harmed or anxious or angry, for all who in our present pandemic struggle because they know illness or loneliness or fear or loss. He had compassion on them, for they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Compassion. This is good news. Good news not just for others, but for us, for all of us. Whatever darkness we encounter, our suffering we endure, our tragedies we witness, our injustice we see, Whatever anxieties we face, loss we experience, or troubles we bear, Jesus has compassion for us. Indeed, whatever we may have done, wherever we have failed, however much we may have fallen short, Jesus has compassion for us. 
for you. Deep, deep compassion. But how will that compassion be expressed now towards others? Jesus is not here in the flesh to speak to troubled and angry crowds. He's not here in body to reach out his hand to rescue or comfort or provide. Not here in person to reach down to those in need or speak out for those who need support and who need a prophetic word spoken in the midst of injustice. No, he is not here physically, but we are. The famous and familiar words of St. Teresa of Avila say it well, Christ has no body now on earth but yours. No hands but yours. No feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which to look out Christ's compassion to the world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless people now. Challenging, isn't it? Jesus' compassion remains. It has not changed. We are now called to be the bearers of that good news and the agents of that compassion in a world of so much tragedy and loss and loneliness and fear. A world where there remains so much disease and death, poverty and need. A world where, as we have seen in these recent days, there is so much division and oppression, racial disharmony and cruel discrimination, injustice and inequality. There are millions of people in our world who need to know compassion we know this, and we know that we are called to care and reach out with the compassion of Jesus who brought good news to the poor. We are called to show this compassion, not simply to the millions somewhere out there in the wide world, but to everyone, whoever they are, whenever we encounter them, whether in person, although that's less likely physically at this moment, but in other ways. We encounter them on our television screens and in our newspapers and we can pray for them. We encounter them through telephone contact, social media, however it is we are in touch with people. The compassion of Jesus urges us to reach out to them with that love, with that same compassion. We who proclaim the good news of God's love and our bearers of Jesus' compassion are called to bring that care and concern and compassion, not just to those far away, not just in the face of a dreadful tragedy, but each and every day to the people we encounter, the people we meet, perhaps, and this can be the most difficult one, can't it, to those with whom we live. As Jesus sent out his disciples on their mission, so he sends us. As they were commissioned by him to speak the good news and bring healing and peace, so are we. All of us need to know, experience and receive the deep and active compassion of Jesus. Some of us will know ourselves how much we need that compassion, even if others around us may not realise our need, our need of comfort or support or assurance or forgiveness, acceptance, understanding. And if we knew the real stories of one another, if we knew the secret pain that some are bearing, the moral failure that has brought private shame, the family crisis that has caused deep personal embarrassment, the health concerns that occasion deep anxiety, and so on and so on, then we would recognise and realise the extent to which all of us need to be shown the compassion of Jesus. And all of us need to show the compassion of Jesus. 
Reaching out with the compassion of Christ in word and action is at the heart of who we are and what we are for. We are called to share in Christ's ongoing mission of compassion and pity, in the sharing of his love by word and deed, wherever we are, however we can in these lockdown times, every day and in every way. As we have been loved so fully, as we are loved so fully, so we are to love fully with the same deep, deep compassion that Jesus has shown to us. Amen. The ones that you love, the ones that you love, you do the things that you have to for the ones that you love. He's on the road 12 hours each day. He can't help believe it. He's working his life away. He'd rather be fishing when push comes to shove. You do the things that you have to for the ones that you love. Laundry and cleaning, the school run and walk. The job that drains her, she asks what's it for. But the answer's so simple for when push comes to shove. You do the things that you have to. For the ones that you love, the ones that you love, the ones that you love, you do the things that you have to. For the ones that you love, the ones that you love, the ones that you love, you do the things that you have to. For the ones that you love. and doctors, irrational fears. You're there when they need you, but when push comes to shove, you do the things that you have to for the ones that you love. The ones that you love, the ones that you love, you do the things that you have to for the ones that you love. The ones that you love, you do the things that you have to for the ones that you love. And let us now dedicate our gifts to God, our gifts of money, however we have managed to give them in these difficult times, and dedicate also our service in the giving of our lives. Let us pray. We give you all thanks and praise, O God, for your love has been poured into our hearts through your Holy Spirit given to us. Most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who revealed your deep compassion for the people. In the fullness of love, he gave his life for us while we were yet lost in our sin. But you raised him from the dead, and now through our faith in him, you justify us and give us access to grace. Therefore, with our hearts lifted high, we offer you thanks and praise, 
and we dedicate our gifts of money for your work in the world and our lives in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, we gather now together in prayer, knowing that as we gather in your name, you are with us. Hear our prayers, Lord. We bring prayers for our families and loved ones, for our friends and work colleagues, for our congregation and our parish, for our city and our nation, and indeed for our whole world, united by the ongoing effects of the coronavirus pandemic. For those who live in fear of what changes are ahead, fear for their own safety or their children's safety at home during this time of lockdown, fear about not being active again. We pray, Lord, that all who live in fear can feel your presence with them and know that they do not need to face their fears alone. For those who live with anxiety about their jobs, about financial matters, anxiety about their state of physical or mental health, or about coping with life. We pray, Lord, that all who live with anxiety can feel your calming reassurance around them, helping them to find positive thoughts. For those who live with grief, grieving the loss of a loved one recently or long ago, grieving the loss of a future they had hoped for, or for the familiar life they knew. We pray, Lord, that all who are grieving will know your hand of comfort, lifting them when they struggle and holding them each step as they move on. For those who live with trauma of what they have seen and dealt with in these times, of distressing change in their life, of changes in the people they love. We pray that your healing hand be on them as they find ways to unload and find a peace in their life. We remember and pray also for those who are lonely, those who are so separated from family members, loved ones and friends, those who find working in these difficult times stressful, those who struggle to cope with the demands of work, families and the current restrictions. We ask that they are open to receive your compassion in their testing times. We pray for scientists, leaders and advisors as countries seek to find the safest way forward for their people. Guide them, Lord, to keep the safety and well-being of your people first in their decisions. We pray for the children of this time the generation who will come to be known as the Rainbow Children, the babies who have not yet met their wider families, the little ones who will not remember their families, the youngsters who don't understand why their lives have been so changed, the children who understand a little but pine for their friends and familiar routine, the teenagers who are concerned about what their future will be like. Lord, we pray that they are all kept safe, calm, reassured and happy in all this time. Lord God, we have also so much to give thanks for. The skills, dedication and loyalty of all who work in hospitals, care homes and in the community, treating and nursing and supporting those with health problems or those who are frail. For those who have continued to provide essential services throughout this time of lockdown, emergency services, transport, postal, refuse, shop, education, delivery companies and many more. For those working in research desperately trying to find a vaccine, for all the amazing ways people have rallied to help those in need. 
for new babies born during this pandemic, for the new things people have learned to do, for the great work within our own congregation to keep everyone connected and for the various facilities which have been put in place to do that. For all these, we are so thankful. From this challenging and unsettling time, we hope and pray that there will be good lessons learned, that we will all understand and acknowledge what is important and essential in life, how to best use what we have, that everybody matters, how to value and protect our planet, how to be more tolerant and understanding, how to truly show love and compassion. Lord God of all compassion, we bring these our prayers, spoken and unspoken, for those known and unknown to us, for those we love and for those we find it difficult to love. And we lay these prayers before you today, trusting that in your time and in your way, you will answer them. Guide us to watch and listen for your call to us and move us to respond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, before we all go our own ways to whatever we're going to be doing next, we have three birthdays. Unusual to have three in one day, but we have got three birthdays to note today. And so we should be singing happy birthday to Daphne, to Ewan and to Daryl. We wish them all a very happy birthday. 